the bull elk call. When the leaves start turning yellow, people act a little strange up around the town of Lakeview in the Warner Mountain Range. I guess we must have caught a virus. Maybe went a little mad. Mike and Rondo both had caught it, and they had it pretty bad. They'd put in their applications way back early in the spring, and they'd drawn a piece of country where the big bulls do their thing. A piece of dirty, brushy country. Rocks were scattered every place, and I'll tell you it was steeper than a Jersey heifer's face. Rondi, Rondo had two little molly mules he'd roped down in the brakes. They were small, but they were mighty, wilder than a pair of snakes. They would strike you, they would stampede, kick the buttons off your clothes. Rondo says, that's just how mules are. Hell, boys, that's the way she goes. He broke them both to pack and work across the flats and hills, and it didn't bother him that they had took some wrecks and spills, because most of Rondo's learning didn't come from hooks or schools, and the folks all seemed to figure he was wilder than those mules. Those two boys loaded up their horses, all their grub, pots, pans, and tack, threw in a half a case of whiskey, plus those mules they're going to pack, honed their knives and cleaned their rifles, grabbed the necessary traps, then took off to find a bull elk high up in the eagle caps. By the time they'd packed their livestock, it had started, it started getting light, had to travel quite a distance just to get to camp that night. They had everything they needed packed up in their treasure trove, even brought along a chainsaw and a little propane stove. When they finally hit their campsite, they were worn out, cold and damp. They were both a little anxious to start setting up their camp. Ron said, don't tie up that mule, Mike. Better hobble her instead. Sometimes she gets a little antsy, and she likes to take her head. If you hobble her, she'll stand there, or at least that's what I hope. But if you tie her up, she'll set back, and she'll break that halter rope. But says Mike, it's not to worry. This mule's plumb pooped out, you see. She'll be right appreciative just to rest beside this tree. <laughs> She's found this is not as easy as a pulling your old wagon, though there ain't no pun intended, you can bet her ass is dragging. <laughs> Let's get unpacked and set up camp now while the livestock catch their breath. Build a fire and cook some supper. I'm about to starve to death. <clears throat> He'd just come up with that statement when that jackass did her thing. The air come gushing out both ends of her and that lead rope broke like string. The chainsaw was a dangling there across the saddle fork. First jump it headed skyward like a shook up champagne cork. That mule took off for the tall uncut as the two watched her set sail, scattering pots and pans and kettles, blowing smoke rings by her tail. Then she stopped up on the ridge top, giving voice to all her woes, blowing hot air out the one end and plus some rollers through her nose. <coughs> while, Mike, while Mike was gathering up the chainsaw, which was scattered down the slope, Rondo cinching up his saddle and a jerking down his rope. Says, I'll try to get around her and start her right back down this draw. Any luck, why I can rope her right there where she dropped that saw. Well, he finally got her circled then, but when she headed back, the valve come loose and opened on that propane in the pack. <laughs> <coughs> the bottle made a whooshing sound. That donkey cranked her tail. Started sounding like a jet plane. Even left a vapor trail. <laughs> Poor old Rondo got to laughing till his eyes filled up with tears. He had just raised up to rope her when that jackass shifted gears. <laughs> Left there running low and level like an F-16 in flight. Now he isn't trying to catch her, he's just keeping her in sight. He, he said if she'd have hit a pine tree, I don't think it would have stopped her, but her tail was making circles like a wounded helicopter. By now the ground was getting steeper. She'd be mighty hard to catch, and she'd blow us all to Hades if somebody lit a match. <laughs> I can't describe the didos that I've seen that donkey make with that propane bottle hissing like a teed off rattlesnake. She comes sliding off that mountain, mostly traveling on her hawk. She would buck and kick and run and busting limbs and rolling rocks. I said, well, you must have roped her as she headed through the pass. He says, hell no, I never caught her till I run her out of gas. She was pooped and she was leaving. She'd been eating lots of grain and that vapor trail she's leaving now don't smell much like propane. <laughs> Well, I finally got her gathered, Rondo told me with a shrug. Only thing left in that pannier was an empty propane jug. But the thing that kept me going was the one small fact, you see. All the booze was in the pannier on the mule still at the tree. If this story has a moral, and most of them do, you see, I'll be damned if I can tell you what the moral ought to be. <laughs> Unless it's be damn sure you're mounted is the opinion Rondo held, you need speed. Speed, nerve, and endurance when a mule just jet propelled. <laughs> <laughs>